It's a little different when you're running um, CO2 because I also don't just, if I want, if I can avoid it, I don't want to just dump all my CO2 straight out of the window. Yes. And that's, I think, where a lot of people steer themselves the wrong way is they'll supplement CO2, but then they'll have their inline fan kick on and exhaust it all out of the grow space. Yeah. So let's get into CO2 a little bit deeper here. How do you supplement CO2 using the tanks or do you use in one of the other methods? Before um, I've used, I've never tried the little cans, but I have tried the, um, uh, what are they called? I can't remember the name, but the little uh, mycelium bags. I've had those. I've ran them more than they recommend you to run them, like more in my space than they say you need. And it seemed like for me personally, in my limited experience, I could never really get the PPM of CO2 I was looking for. I think the highest I ever got with three of those bags in a 5x5 five five tent was like 860 PPM. So now I have got, I just run a 20 pound tank. I have a 20 pound tank right outside of my tent. I have an automatic controller that goes in the tent. There's a little fan in that controller that's always pulling air through the box and getting a CO2 rating on it. And I can set my high and low. And so then if I set my low to say 800 and my high to 1400, as soon as the CO2 dips below 800, the electronic valve will open and that tank will start leaking out CO2. It's just piped in through a little small air hose that's run right to the very top of my tent because the CO2 is really heavy. So I run it up top. The goal is to have it fall down, and as it's falling through the canopy, all these fans towards the bottom of the tent are just going to keep it moving all around the leaf surfaces so they can just use it all the time. Because your leaf can really only use the CO2 that is like right there touching the leaf surface on the top and the bottom. So I always want to be moving it around. But after you get it set up, after I have this set up, it was a little expensive to set up. The controller. It's a little expensive. The valve isn't very expensive, but the electronic controller is. And that first CO2 tank, I think, was close to 200 bucks. But the way it works is it's just an exchange program. So now every time I want to go get more CO2, I just take my empty tank to the um, grow shop, drop it off, and pick up a new one. Like, they don't like refill it or anything. They have full ones there waiting on you. And that price to refill that is very very small like um i'm paying like under i think it's like 15 dollars. i can't remember exactly it's so small that i don't even know the exact price because usually when i add it to whatever else i'm getting from the grocery store like i can't i'm not sure what how much it costs you know it's under 20 bucks is all i know but for the potential that you can get in your growth um and not just your growth, because it's not always about biomass. It's not always always about plant size. To me, I like the CO2 really because it makes my plant, it just seems to make the plant more hardy in every way I can imagine. It seems to make it more resilient to drought stress, more resilient to heat stress, more resilient to pest and pathogens. And if I can get faster plant growth, that's always great. Even if I'm not going for a bigger plant, I always like to get to harvest, you know, quicker. If I can save a little time, that's always great. It gives me time to start a new round. It's super beneficial. I know there's a study out of Utah State University where they ran 1,400 ppm in the flowering stage and they got a 30% increase in yield. I saw that. I saw um, that. I think it was Debaco University covered that on his YouTube channel. And when you see those pictures, of those plants you're like well that's clear that's clear as day that's the clearest thing i've ever seen like there's no way i'm gonna it's when you realize it and for me it was really like what really made me look into it is when i realized how many of these big commercial facilities might cut corners to save money here and there and there and there and they're cutting corners to save money wherever they can but never ever ever on the co2 the CO2 is running all day, every day, really high, 1,400, 1,500 ppms, and it's because they've seen it. It's because they've had a room that had a few hundred plants in it, and then they had a room right beside it with a few hundred plants in it, 
and they only had enough CO2 one round to run it in one room. And they saw the difference in these two rooms. And they were like, okay, that was huge. That was a, that was 30% more money came out of the same size room. We can never make that mistake again. Yeah. So super beneficial. A lot of, uh, a lot of good can come out of it. Although it is a, a upfront cost. He mentioned $200 for the tank to begin plus hundreds of dollars for the controller valve, all that stuff. But Pays for itself pretty quickly there. Yeah, I think so. Are you running it daytime only? Uh, a lot of people will, will just do CO2 in the daytime and they'll, uh, say, ignore it during nighttime? Yeah. Um, the controller I have is actually set up to run exactly that way. So it has, it's monitoring two things at the same time. The first one is the fan that pulls the air through and reads the actual PPMs of the CO2. The second thing is just a little light monitor right on the front of the controller box. So, and you put that inside of your tent. And so anytime there isn't a very bright light source, like if your grow light isn't turned on, then that thing just defaults to stay off all night long. So all during the night or all during lights off, it's not putting out any CO2 at all. And then as soon as the lights come on in the morning, it just starts all over again. Go to the full episode by clicking the outro card here or click the link in the description section below. Catch you in the next video.